Project Community, Split State, a WISN 12 News Special. A discussion over dinner at the chef's table in Milwaukee's Walker's Point neighborhood. So many people, I don't care where you're from, what side of the fence you're on, the truth doesn't matter anymore. It's someone's opinion. Opinion is fact. It's, it's like, like people don't opinion. see outside of their own so, little bubble. Real talk with real people from our community. I don't understand why we can't approach social, economic problems independent of parties. The issues dividing us as a state. I think politicians say that we need to work together. It's a handy dandy soundbite, but they don't practice it. Segregation in Milwaukee. You can just kind of feel the atmosphere change when you walk in, you know, and then it's all like it's all eyes on you or somebody's gripping their child a little harder. Can we bridge the divide? Are we any closer today? Let's face it, we all want good. I think most of us do. It's just how we get there. So how did we get here? I don't know, I think it's mostly because of income differences. Part of it is because people haven't had access to um, opportunity. We took a drive through Milwaukee from the city to the suburbs, and many we met noticed a division. There are certain areas of the city that when you pass a certain road or a certain cross street, race does end up changing as far as locales. It is not just race. I think classism is a real issue that exists around here. I think it's ignorance. A lot of people don't even know, know about the way of life in other towns. The Brookings Institute took it even further, calling us the most segregated city in America. There's always been kind of a unspoken word about where you go and if you didn't stay kind of in those parameters, you were always profiled, um, whether it is walking or whether it was driving. Local and national voices know the power of perception. When I first came here, I saw it as a union town. You know, there are a lot of unions, a lot of uh, blue collar jobs that uh, made it possible for, to, for, for people to uh, raise their families and send their kids to school. It's not just geography, but politics as well. This election is that close. Recent victories in the race for Wisconsin governor and state Supreme Court, both by narrow margins, highlight a much more purple state than ever before. I hope we get a, a better sense of, of who our fellow citizens are. You know, the United States is a melting pot. There are at least two subjects where Milwaukeeans unite. One is sports. You want the Bucks to win. You want the Brewers to win. Something to focus upon. And I think that way people stop thinking about individualization and look at the big picture. Another is food. And that is where our dinner discussion begins. I want to give each of you a chance to just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background. Start with Amanda. Sure. So I'm Amanda Faltz, mother of five, live in Mequon, and um, was born and raised here. Went to Marquette, pursued a biomedical sciences degree, and then spent some time in business development in the healthcare arena, and then started a company with my family. I'm Carrie Balliott. Um, I have called Milwaukee home since 2005. My wife and I moved here with our two kids in 05 uh, for her job. And uh, eight months after we moved here, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And she passed away in 2010. My name is Bob. I uh, lived in Milwaukee my whole life. I'm married. I have an adult daughter and an adult son. I am retired military. And I'm also retired from the Milwaukee Police Department. I retired in 05 from the military in 2016 from uh, police and pretty much ever since I've been watching my grandson. I am Chrishella Roche, born and raised in Milwaukee, graduate of Alabama State University and uh, I own Vibes Creative Art Space inside the new Sherman Phoenix. Uh, my name is Greg Bach, I am a comedian and comedy producer and a barber. I work at uh, Jose's Barber Extraordinaire in Bayview, I've lived in Milwaukee for 20 years now. I was born and raised in Waukesha. In a former life, I worked in politics, uh, small governor politics, and I was also a, I worked for the Obama campaign in 2008. I'm married and we live in Bayview. I'm uh, Jason Austin. I own uh, Heaven's Table Barbecue. I grew up in Milwaukee all my life. I went to MATC for culinary arts school. Um, ended up 
being an educational assistant at MATC, and then I went and got my bachelor's at uh, Cardinal Stretch. I am married, I have a one-year-old who acts like he's three. <laughs> <laughs> the Brookings Institute report and, uh, recently said that Milwaukee is the most segregated city in the nation. Where do you all stand? Do you agree or disagree and why? All right, I'll start again. <laughs> <laughs> it is very segregated. And in segregated, I don't necessarily mean that it's a bunch of racist people staying here and things like that, but as soon as you walk over, cross over to the 16th Street Viaduct, or the 27th Street, or the 35th Street, you know where you are. And I think it's not that people are racist. I just think people just don't care enough to um, want to get to know other cultures. I've gone in uh, stores on the south side, north side, everywhere, and you can just kind of feel the atmosphere change when you walk in, you know, and then it's all like, it's all eyes on you or somebody's gripping their child a little harder or something like that, and it, and it hurts you, but you understand that is how they were brought up, you know, and, and unfortunately, there's blacks like that, there's whites like that, there's Hispanics like that, but that's just how they're brought up, and I think the only way to end it is to stop it with you or with me and teach your children differently, so. That's my take on it. I think going off of what Jason's saying, I hear like the, you know, as far as the official title, I feel like Milwaukee is always, it's Milwaukee or Detroit or Chicago, like it's, we're, we're always in that top five. Why? If I had to take a simple explanation, it's about, you know, the opportunities for people and where, what they have available to them to do and the places where they can live and the places they can go. We have clients who come to the, the shop and say things like, I, I love where you're at, I love your shop, there's no barber shops where I'm around, and they're from Tosa. I'm like, there are, they're below 50th. Mm -hmm. You're not going there, mm -hmm. but they're there. It's, it's like people don't awareness. see outside of their own exactly. little bubble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So kind of like with what you said, people only see like what's around them. They don't take time to explore, you know, like, what's down on, on Firth Street or what's down in, on Kinnikinnick? Like, mm -hmm. they only see their little neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that have not been outside of Milwaukee to even know that things aren't just what's in front of you. But I do think it's unfortunate, um, and I do think that we can take the steps to change that perception. And like you said, it starts with us. Some people may have had bad experiences, no matter what their races. They may have had a bad experience. I know somebody that had a bad experience and automatically that's their perception of how everybody is. I'm curious to hear from you, Bob, given your background with police department and being in so many different communities in, in this city. Part of the problem is, maybe to your point, that so many people, I don't care where you're from, what side of the fence you're on, the truth doesn't matter anymore. It's someone's opinion. Opinion is fact. If you look at this person, that's the way they are. You look at this person, that's the way they are. And that's so far from the truth. It's kind of what Jason was saying, that it crosses everyone, all demographics. And we're divided by perception. What everybody perceived everybody to be. And I've been in some bad, bad situations. This scares me. And we need to come together. And we're close to the point of no return. As a country, I don't mean this group or that group or this person or that person. I'm talking about as a country. If we're not together as a country, everything else does not matter. It, it just doesn't matter. Do you think, though, that sometimes you need to get to the brink of no return in order for it to come back? No. No? I don't know if I. I don't know if I agree with that. I. I think. Then you're talking 1860s. No, I think that there are times though where things can can go to this side, and then that in itself, that event or those events, can then take people and band them and rally them together. I'm glad there's people that kind of have that thought, and they say, "Well, I think this can happen," and this. You need young minds, and you need that. But in my opinion. From my experiences, nobody wants to be a cop. Nobody wants to be an EMS. Nobody wants to work probation and parole. Nobody wants to join the military. When I was a cop, it was my life. When I was in the military, that was my life. The sacrifices my family make, you have no clue. None. It was my life. 
And when you go there, you have to be 100% no matter your profession. But if you're not 100% when you're a cop, you die. When you're not 100% in the military, you die and others die.